Hello, my name is Luana Maroja. I'm a professor of evolutionary genetics at Williams College. And today in this course, I'll be talking about why do we age, focusing on the evolutionary theory of senescence. So, selection, natural selection, should maximize lifetime fitness. If an individual lives for longer, it should leave more offspring, and therefore natural selection should increase the number of individuals living for a very long time. So it is perhaps puzzling that we see not only variation between individuals of the same species, but also huge variation between lifespan of different species. So let's recap natural selection. For natural selection to happen, you have to have variation between individuals. So here we have three, let's say, chickens laying different number of eggs. One of the chickens lays more eggs than the other two. This variation needs to be heritable. So the offspring of these uh, chickens should lay um, a number of eggs that is similar to what her mother used to lay. Um, we can look directly at the offspring. We can also plot, and that's a different way of measuring heritability, um, plot the uh, number of offspring produced by the parent, in, in this case the mother, the number of eggs produced by the mother, and the number of eggs produced by her daughters. So the inclination of this line, uh, the correlation between the daughter's egg production and the mother's egg production, is the heritability. So a perfect inclination would be maximum heritability, in which case the, the daughters are identical to the mothers for that particular trait. So in this case here, we see that there is a correlation that mothers that lay lots of eggs have daughters that lay lots of eggs and vice versa. So the next necessity is that there is differences in fitness. So there is uh, individuals that lay a lot of eggs um, produce more offspring than individuals that lay fewer eggs. So over a lifetime, those individuals that were capable of laying more eggs will have more living descendants than those that had uh, laid fewer eggs. And if this happens, then evolution is inevitable. We're going to see the increase in the number of, in this case, chickens that lay more eggs um, and therefore have more offspring over a lifetime. So what you see in the graph is that as time goes, the number of these individuals, uh, uh, high egg layers, um, will increase over time. Uh, and eventually, all the individuals will lay lots of eggs. So those three things are called the postulates of natural selection. So there must be variation. This variation must be heritable. And some variants must be more fit than other variants. Um, if those three things are happening, the natural selection is inevitable and you will see the increase in the most fit um, variation. So again, selection should be producing um, long-lived individuals, you would expect. Long-lived individuals should have more offspring. Um, should be maximizing, therefore, lifespan, uh, egg producing or, or offspring producing. Um, and basically create individuals that are very, very fit. Uh, these individuals have been called Darwinian demons uh, in the past and in the literature, and they are imaginary creatures. So people have been trying to find a perfect example of one of these Darwinian demons, which would have, they would have lots of high quality offspring. Offspring that are perhaps um, born inseminated and ready to lay eggs, survive for an infinite number of years, and uh, produce lots of these high quality offspring. So one of these uh, potential organisms is a dust mite. Um, and this particular creature is born adult and inseminated. So when they come out, they are already adult and they are already fertilized, but they're far from immortals. So in fact, each one of these daughters will be eaten alive by her own offspring in a few days. So they do not really represent a Darwinian demon. So let's look at other examples. 
Another one would be a kiwi bird. The kiwi bird lays an egg that is enormous. You can see in this figure, uh, the egg basically occupies the entire um, cavity of the female. And uh, they are very high quality, very high survival rate. But again, far from a Darwinian demon, these guys can only lay very few eggs in a lifetime. Uh, they have, they're not immortal, they have a limited lifespan. Uh, and they produce very few offspring overall. People have been trying to find organisms that do not age or are, are immortal. Um, the record has been a clam living for 507 years in the deep sea. Sea urchins are up there as well, 200 years. Um, lobsters can live for more than 50 years. But none of them are immortal and all of them have their fitness decaying with age. So they senesce just like we humans do. So as they get old, their probability of dying increases. So why don't we live forever? Shouldn't natural selection um, increase our fitness by um, giving advantage to individuals that can survive for longer and therefore the lifespan of a species should go up? and evolve over time to be ever more um, survival and uh, ever more long-lived. Uh, so if you look across the species, in this figure you show, uh, it shows several different species um, from insects living less than one year to turtles more than a hundred years. Uh, and you can see that there is a huge variation between different species of um, animals. Uh, and if you look within a species, there is also a ton of variation between individuals of the same species. So here we have a study plotting survivorship of chimps and human hunter-gatherers. And you see that for chimps, the two lines above, you have a full mortality, so they only survive to about 40 years and different individuals will die at different times. So you can see that some individuals do not pass their first two years, whereas others survive all the way to 40 years. Um, and a similar pattern is seen for hunter-gatherers, so the uh, highest mortality in the early years, followed by low mortality during reproductive years, and again, high mortality as those individuals become older. But of course, different individuals die at different times in their lives. So there is not only variation between species, but there is also variation within individuals of the same species. Uh, and of course, senescence affects all species. So what we mean by senescence is not simply getting older, but the detriments that come with age. So fitness decreases, you, uh, you, you, the number of offspring an individual can have peaks at a mature age and then it slowly decreases, going to zero. Um, at some point late in life. Um, if you measure in other ways, so uh, a number of biological measurements, you also see uh, um, this decrease in fitness over time. So this is what we mean by senescence. So evol uh, evolution and natural selection not only do not give eternal life, but is not even able to um, avoid senescence. So basically all organisms out there suffer senescence as they age. So why is that? So if we think of the postulates of natural selection, we know that there is variation between individuals. So different individuals um, survive for uh, different amounts of times, even within the same species. Um, we also know that this variation is heritable. So there is a correlation between parents and offspring. So here we have a graph showing um, the offspring of a mouse in this case, lab mouse, the uh, survival of offspring correlated with the uh, survival of the uh, parents. And you see that the line has an inclination indicating that um, lifespan is heritable. So if there is variation of between individuals and this variation is heritable and we would think that living longer is beneficial for fitness, why doesn't natural selection increase longevity across all species?
So in this module, we uh, recapped what natural selection does in uh, natural organisms, and we end up with the question of why does a natural selection maximize lifespan across all species? Why do we senesce and die? In the next module, we will explore some of the uh, theoretical predictions of uh, why this is and why selection is unable to extend lifespan uh, for an eternity across um, all species of animals.